The following stories were written by Franklin W. Dixon. They are currently in the public domain and are archived in the Gutenberg Project at gutenberg.org. The Hardy Boys, read by Rob Young. Hello, welcome, I'm Rob. I hope you are enjoying this Hardy Boy novel. As a teenager, I read all the Hardy Boys stories, and I loved seeing how the brothers worked together to solve the mysteries. This week, I have a new format with video where you can see the person behind the voice. Let me know with a thumbs up if you like this new format. Let's begin and see what adventure the boys are up to this week. The Hardy Boys, The House on the Cliff Previously in Chapter 17, The Chamber in the Cliff, Joe and Frank move along the secret passage to a set of stairs. They climb the stairs and find a closed door. The door is stuck, but with force opens with a clatter into a chamber filled with smuggled goods. They look around the chamber, but cannot see a way forward. They then notice a group of empty boxes that are piled on a shelf just above the floor. Behind these supported boxes is a hidden door attached to the shelf so that when the door is closed, it is hidden by the boxes. The boys open the door and find another passage, but as they enter it, they hear voices. They retreat and hide. Two smugglers enter the chamber, and for a moment the boys think they are doomed to discovery. From their hiding place, they hear the smugglers discussing their plans for moving the goods. Then they hear the footsteps slowly approach their hiding place. Chapter 18, A Startling Discovery The Hardy Boys were tense with a realization of their peril. The strong electric light that hung from the center of the ceiling cast such a vivid illumination that they were sure they would be seen, particularly when they found that the boxes behind which they were hidden were spaced some distance apart. But for the folds of the silk that hung down over the opening, they would certainly have been seen. Here's some of that special silk, they heard the first man say. Perhaps I'd better bring it up, too. Burke was saying he could handle some more silk. We're done for, thought Frank. If he ever comes close enough to pick up that silk, he'll see us, sure. But the other man objected. What's the use? You won't get any more thanks for carrying all that stuff upstairs, even if Burke does take it. And if he doesn't, you'll just have to cart it all the way back down again. My motto in this gang is do just what Snackley tells me and no more. I guess you're right. We'll just bring up the dope. To the relief of the boys, the man turned away and went back to the other side of the chamber. They could hear a rustling sound. Then came the words, Well, we got it. Let's go back up. The switch snapped, and the cavern was steeped in darkness immediately. It was a darkness immeasurably welcomed to the lads crouched behind the boxes. They began to breathe more easily. They heard the door close, and then they could hear the footsteps of the two men as they ascended the stairs in the passageway. When the footsteps could be heard no more, Frank switched on the flashlight with a sigh of relief. That was a close call, gosh, but I was sure they had us. We wouldn't have had any chance with that pair. You can bet your life they carry guns. Well, let's follow them. I'm with you. We know we're on the right track. And we know we're liable to blunder right into the whole den of smugglers if we don't watch our step. It's going to be ticklish from now on. It can't be any more ticklish than it has been. I lived about ten years while that pair was in here. They crossed the chamber and again opened the door. Cautiously, they stepped out on the landing, closed the door behind them, and again confronted the flight of stairs. I'll go first, said Frank. Stick close behind me. 
he decided to turn on the flashlight because it was barely possible that the smugglers might have a guard at the top of the stairs, in which event their approach would be discovered. So in the inky blackness they ascended, step after step. They reached the top of the first flight of stairs, and then they found themselves upon a crude landing of planks, which ran along the side of the rock wall for some distance until it ended in another flight of steps. Here the boys stopped again to listen. All was as silent as the tomb, save for the distant pounding of the sea upon the cliff. I don't hear a sound, whispered Joe. Come on, came from his brother. The passage through the rock was of considerable depth, and they went on up countless steps until their limbs were weary. They had never realized that the cliff was so high until now. But at length they reached the final landing, and there they were confronted by another door. This door, they assumed, either led out into the open or into some cave just below the surface of the ground. Perhaps, thought Frank, it even led into the cellar of the Palooka house. The boys pressed close to the door, taking care to make no noise, and listened. They heard not a sound. Still, with the caution arising from their previous narrow escape, they decided to wait a little longer. As later events proved, it was well that they did. For a while they could hear nothing from beyond the door, and there was no indication that anyone was there. But after listening intently for as long as five minutes, they heard a queer shuffling sound and then a sigh. That was all. Someone there, breathed Frank in a low whisper. Joe nodded in the darkness. They did not know what to do. It seemed apparent that there was someone beyond the door, possibly a sentry. If there was only one man, it might be possible to attack him and disarm him, although it was scarcely possible that they could do this without noise and without attracting the attention of the smugglers. The problem was solved for them. A door thudded in the distance. Then there was a muffled murmur of voices growing in volume and a trampling of feet. I tell you this nonsense has gone far enough. He'll sign. He'll sign right now or I'll know the reason why. The boys started, for the voice was none other than the voice of the man who had ordered them out of the cove that afternoon. That's the stuff, chief, returned someone. Make him sign and promise to keep his mouth shut. If he doesn't, he'll never live to tell about it. That's one thing, sure, snapped the first man coldly. There was the sound of a switch being snapped, and then the boys could see a yellow beam of light beneath the door at their feet. From the sounds, they judged that three or four men had entered the room beyond. Well, he's still here said the man who had been addressed as chief. He strode across the room, and the boys could hear a chair scrape on the board floor. You'll find that this is an easier place to get into than it is to get out of. A weary voice answered him. The tones were low. The boys could not make out the words. You're a prisoner here, and you'll be a prisoner here until you die, unless you sign that paper. Again the weary voice spoke, but as before the tones were so low that the words were indistinguishable. You won't sign, eh? We'll see about that. Wait till he goes hungry for a few days, and then he'll think differently, put in one of the other men. There was a hoarse laugh from his companions. Yes, you'll be hungry enough before we're through with you. I can promise you that said the harsh voice. Are you going to sign? No, they heard the prisoner in the other room answer. Who was this man who was evidently held captive by the smugglers in the underground room? The same thought was in the mind of each boy as he listened to the conversation. You know too much about us. You've found out too much and we'll never let you out of here. To use your information, 
You may as well get that straight. You've read that paper. If you don't sign it, you will starve. The prisoner evidently did not reply. Give him a taste of that hot iron, suggested one of the smugglers. No, nothing like that. It's too crude. I'm giving him his chance. He can sign this paper now or take the consequences. Still, there was no reply. Getting obstinate, are you? Won't you even answer me? The leader of the gang was evidently getting angry. Suddenly he shouted out, Sign this paper, Hardy, or you'll starve. As sure as my name is Snackley, 